So, uh, what if you're what if you're doing all of this work? You're creating stuff, and uh, you invite people to come, and only one person shows up. That's today's coffee break. I'm Franklin Taggart. This is the coffee break. I've got my coffee. Grab yours. Let's have a chat. Um, I've watched the ZZ Top documentary on Netflix, I think, at least three times, probably maybe three and a partial time. <laughs> ZZ Top has been one of my favorite bands since I was probably around 15 years old. And I love those guys. Um, but in the in the documentary, one of the things that they talked about was that for the, the first gig that they ever had, there was one person who was there. Just one person in the whole room. And Billy Gibbons talked about that they they had taken a taken a short break and they bought the guy a Coke so that he would stay for the second half of the show. And uh, boy, did that register for me. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a few years, but they were, you know, playing for thousands of people. But even ZZ Top and even the greatest bands in the world um, had to start somewhere. And it's the same way for anybody who's starting something new. You you know you you can't start uh, unless unless you've got some kind of uh, influencer racket going on. You can't start with thousands of people coming to see your shows before you've ever done anything. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is possible in the internet age. Uh, God knows there there are influencers on Instagram and YouTube and. Um, TikTok at this point, who, you know, they show up every day, they make something, and then people follow them. Um, and when when it comes time for them to actually do something important, there's a group there that's waiting for it. So maybe there is something to that. But in any case, I was thinking about the frustration that I used to feel early on when um, when I was first moving into um, a solo singer-songwriter performing kind of a, a path. And first of all, I was just, I was so, I was so hypersensitive to anything that happened in the room. And I remember just really getting angry when people were talking louder than the music and, and all kinds of stuff. It took me a few years to realize that people weren't primarily at a bar to, to hear music. They were primarily at a bar to see each other and to talk. <laughs> and that I was just a part of the background. And that was kind of a, a thing that I had to, to deal with for a few years. But I remember how difficult it was when I was first starting out as a solo performer. First of all, you know, letting everybody know that I was playing not knowing if anybody was going to show up, going to a new place where nobody knew me and, you know, playing to the three people that were there. And it was not easy. It was not easy at all. Um, and I think a, a big part of it when we're creators is that we get excited about the things that we're making and we, we just want them to catch on quickly, you know. And when they don't, we start to question whether or not, you know, we have done something that people will enjoy. Um, and I think, you know, for a lot of the creating that we do, like if we're creating a, a product or a course or a book or something like that, you know, you can create feedback loops as you go of people who will, will give you an honest opinion of what they think of it, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not really what I'm talking he about here. I think the thing that I'm talking about is that when you're first starting out in a direction, the numbers are probably going to be pretty small to start with. Now, that's not to say that they can't grow really rapidly. I was just talking to a guy on um, Facebook this morning. He's a YouTube creator, and he just started a channel, I don't know, just a few months ago, and he's already up to like 4,000 subscribers. And the way that he got those subscribers was he just did like three short videos on YouTube, three of the YouTube shorts. 
and he got found that way. And he was talking about a topic that there were a lot of people who were interested in it. I think it was guitar or something like that. So it may not take a long time for you to grow the audience that you want for what you're doing. But it's going to take some patience. It's going to take some trying things. It's going to be, um, it, it may be that you, um, that your first few forays out into the world with whatever it is that you've made are going to be, you know, met by crickets. Well, don't give up. Just go ahead and keep getting out there. Put, put your best foot forward. Put the things out there that you've made. And people will, will find them as you let them know about them. Right? So one of the things that was really interesting, for the first year that I was playing solo shows, um, there were probably, I don't know, maybe three or four people who showed up more than once. And as they showed up, they started telling more people to come. And by the end of that first year, I had built up a, a small group of people that were loyal fans that would show up if I played in their area. And then when I started to expand into different regions, I would ask them to let people know if they knew people in that area, let them know that I was going to be playing there and to invite them to go. And it took a long time. But after a few years of, of consistently showing up and playing and inviting people and asking them to join my mailing list, back then it was a snail mail list. It was, and we, um, email was still pretty new. I just, I remember that, you know, after a couple of three years, my mailing list got up to be like 3,500 people. And so when my CD came out, you know, I, I sold out of my first printing of CDs fairly quickly because I had, you know, I had that many people who were waiting for it to be released. Very interesting. So the one thing that I just want to tell you is that keep, keep showing up, keep putting your best stuff out there. And I think it's, I think it's a good idea to find one or two people that you can share your discouragement with. <laughs> I have to say that that was one of the things that helped me the most was that there were a couple of people that I really trusted implicitly. And I just, I went to them and I said, am I doing something wrong here? <laughs> Is there something that I need to change? Is there something that I need to do differently? And I would hear back from them, you know, the things that they thought. And sometimes there were things that I could do differently. Like one of the things that I did, you know, to continually shoot myself in the foot was to wait too long to announce a gig. And so people didn't know about it and they didn't have the ability to say no or yes to it. They didn't have the information that they needed in, a, in time to make it to make it to the show. So that was one of the lessons I had to learn, too, is that I had to I had to create a system to let people know well enough in, in advance that they could make plans. And then the other thing that I had to get over was the idea that I, if I just told people about it once, that they would show up. No, what had to happen was that I needed to remind people about it. So that was a part of my system as well. Okay. But as I developed that system and as I continued to show up and as people continued to have a good time, my audience began to grow. And it's the same way now with my YouTube channel and my podcast. I keep showing up and people continue to share it with new people and my audience continues to grow. It's very gradual growth, but I'm celebrating every new member, every new subscription. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see like across all of the different channels that I do the podcast on between YouTube and Spotify and Apple podcasts and anchor and all of the different channels that it's distributed to my listenership is now um you know it, it's up in the hundreds per episode which is the best performance that i've ever had 
for a podcast. That feels really good. So every time that I release a new show, hundreds of people are hearing it. Well, that's pretty cool. That's great. If you're one of the hundreds that are hearing this, thank you for listening. But I just want you to be encouraged. If you're, if you're getting out there with something new, it's going to take some time and some effort on your part to let people know about it. And as you get out there and tell people about it, the right people are going to find their way to your music, to your books, to your courses, to your products, to your services, whatever it is. But don't give up just because in the beginning only one or two or a few people are showing up for what you do. All that said, I hope you're having a good whatever it is where you are. It's a Saturday evening here, and I'm about ready to kick back for a little while and relax for a bit. I appreciate your time and your attention, and I will be back again tomorrow with yet another coffee break. Thanks. So long.